All right. Welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, joined as always by this gentleman on the other side of the table, Randy Angston. Hello. 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 Hey, real quick, guys, take a pen and paper out or get on your iPhone and pop in ironcircle.net. You're going to need to know this URL because after you hear this episode, you're going to be like, oh, I want to join the Iron Circle. And that's the URL. Boom. You're welcome. That's your that's your application. Yeah, true. You can't just join it. Yeah, not everyone can just jump in that one. Sorry. Anyways, uh, quick. Well, this episode, guys, we, we don't have much time, so we got to knock this one out quick for you. Um, we, we, we take a lot of calls with gyms. In fact, you take most of the calls. I, I, I talk to people here and there, but you take most of the calls and there's, there's uh, sentiment, sentiment in the kind of, kind of theme of all of these gyms where, you know, they're, they're up against the decision to make, whether or not to move forward or not. And, and this is not just with us and our coaching programs or, or doing something like the CLA, mm -hmm. but it's in their business in general. And, you know, there's, times and things that they do that prevent them from taking action. So let's kind of get into why that could, what could be happening and, and really, you know, the, the caveat to this whole thing is there is no treading water. Correct. There is no standing still. I'll give it, give you a great example. Uh, it's June, 2022. And let's just say for instance, you're making $40,000 a month gross revenue in June of 2022. June of 2021, you were also generating $40,000 in gross revenue one year ago. That $40,000, you know, on paper, it looks like you just treaded water yeah, for the last 12 months. We're even. Unfortunately, with the current economic situation that we're in, that $40,000 is what the administration would tell you is, is worth 8% less than it did, was last year. But in reality, it feels closer to 30 to 40% less in spending power than it did one year ago. Mm -hmm. You decayed by 30 to 40%. Now that's dramatic and this isn't always going to be the case, but what is the case is inflation happens. Cost of living happens automatically, whether you like it or not over time. We just happen to be in this hyperinflation status right now to where there's way more currency out in the marketplace. That value of that particular bill, that note, that Federal Reserve note nope. that you're holding in your hand, is, it doesn't go as far. And so if you were to take the, you know, I would say 30% of what we would feel like less spending power, that $40,000 is like uh, $12,000 less spending power than it was one year ago. Could you imagine walking around thinking that you can spend 40K and having $28,000 in your pocket to spend? That's pretty much what That's it what is. It, it's, it's the truth of it. How do I make this 28,000 now stretch to 40 or look or feel like 40K? That's the situation business owners are in today. So back to the point of that you always hit on there, there's either growth or there's decay. There is no treading water because, you know, in that equation, 40,000 last June to $40,000, you know, this June, the spending power is 30% less. Yeah. Let's be honest. Abs and, and that carries over in, in, you know, every pillar of life, right? I mean, we'd look at the body and health and fitness and things like that. If you're not trying, if you're not progressing, Things are, we're, we're aging, we're, you know, our bodies are slowing down, the metabolism slows down, like things happen away from the direction that we want them to go just based on time. You have to be actively or proactive when it comes to the result we're trying to achieve in a better, healthy situation. So it's not just business, but th this has been a very, very easy, clear example with mm -hmm. the, the economic situation of what it's like where if you're not move that's you're not you're not intentionally moving forward or backwards life is happening around you and your situation is now less than what you thought it was because you're not growing with the things around you exactly. and um yeah but there's a number of things we were talking about this uh, as we were coming into this episode what are the things that hold gym owners from taking action right like we know that we need to grow we know just let's let's say that that's the facts right now that we need to outgrow you know, the, the economy just to even to survive, stay even, it, just to stay even. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So what do we do? What, what can we do or how do we get ourselves? What's preventing us from taking action? Is it that we don't have the knowledge? We don't know what we don't know type of thing. All right. Well, there's courses, there's masterminds, there's coaches, there's 
you know, books. There's everything available Podcasts. to you. Podcasts. There you go. Uh, we live in a, look at that. We live in a, uh, I, I've used the term or the, the example, like MIT publishes their whole curriculum online. The information's there. That's Google is the number one resource for information in the world. YouTube, number two. Guys, Google it. Like the information is there. Um, but it takes the work and it takes the, the decision to go implement that work to get the result, period. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're fearful of failure because they've tried and they've failed in the past. Maybe you've done other coaching programs and the next one, you know, I, I've had that exact example. Oh, well, I've, I've worked with other coaches in the past and I didn't get the result that I wanted. So I don't know if I'm ready to move forward here. Okay. But what you did with them is apples to oranges, what you're receiving here, right? So that old failure is now dictating the level of success and growth that they can have today. Yeah. Self-limiting beliefs, right? Baggage. Ba yeah, exactly. You're, yeah. You're taking old stuff with you. Um, money. Money, cash flow. Not available. Find the damn money, guys. There's so much money available, guys, out there in the world. I, I mean, as easy as asking a friend or family, you can get credit card. We just talked about the points in, in mm -hmm. the last episode. Uh, the bank, right? There's loans. There's short-term loans. There's, uh, in fact, Mind Body right now. I just heard. Yeah, we that, just heard that. I heard that they'll give you a, a front-end loan and they'll just take, you know, like whatever, some chunk of your cash receivables to pay it back automatically. So you can front end, you know, and get your cash flow for next month. Now, I mean, go, I don't rec look. I don't yeah. re recommend getting in a hole. But look, if you if you're if this is it, right? This is the this is the opportunity to to take. Or if you don't take it, you're not going to be, in the, you're not going to be in the same place one year from now. Because again, we just hope talked you're to, here, right? We hope you're still open. But like dire times call for desperate measures Correct. and you've got to take action and, and find the money, right? If that's, if that's the thing holding you back, we had a, uh, a gentleman in our, that's been in our ecosystem for five years. Yeah. He's been telling us he's going to join. He did not He's telling us he's going to join. He did not And I'm talking about our coaching program. Uh, finally at the growth summit, he, he came to me. He's like, I'm in, I'm going to find the money. He, he made some calls yep. to clients. He had some tough conversations. He found the money. And literally, guys, I can't even, I mean, this is not, results not typical. I'm going to put an asterisk. This particular uh, gym owner has tripled his investment, actually five times his investment in one week. It's not typical, but look, I was like, why didn't you do this a long time ago? He's like, it's, it was in my head. Yeah. Get out of our own way. Some that, and that's the, the most frustrating part is when you, when you can, when we see it, right? Like we have, we've see it all and just the vision of, I just can't like the person who needs to take the action and do the work. Like they just can't grasp what they have in front of them. Yeah. It's like the, the, it's the leading horse to water thing. And it's like, it's right here in front of you. If you could just see it yourself. Yeah. Um, but once, you know, once whatever it is that once that shift takes place, maybe they found the money, maybe they, you know, and he's, had paid, a he's paid that person back already in one week. Look at that. He's like, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Now he's on his own. He's already, he's covered it. And the guy was like, oh, that's all you needed. All right, cool. <laughs> he got he took care of it. Yeah. And and you know, and sometimes I'll get on a call with the gym and, and look, there's nothing I can do to help you. And I'll tell you that. But like for for most of the time, it's like I know exactly yeah. what we need to do, and here's what we're gonna and we go do it really fast. Like his his plan was launched in 48 hours. We we wasted no time. I dissected the problem. We went through all of his deliveries, his systems, his capacity, his pricing, all of that looked pretty good. He lacked lead flow. He mm -hmm. lacked, uh, he was a great salesperson. Everybody says they are, but he was. He actually is. Yeah. He actually is. And he's proven it with yep. all, he, you know, we booked uh, within the first, I think three days of running ads. I think we had booked like 24 appointments and then he'd, he'd done like 15 or, or 20 of those. He's closed 11 of them. And he, you know, right now he's got another 32 appointments booked all through automation, by the way, he didn't have to really work that hard to get all these to happen. He made some calls, uh, but yeah, he's, he's off the charts. He, off the he, charts. he was in a situation, guys, the, the reason that we're bringing this to attention is because nothing changed in his position other than taking the correct action for the problems that he had. Point being, he was, his growth was was 100 percent dependent upon the lead flow in mm -hmm. his situation when we got in there we looked at it and like tim said it's pretty rare that we get into a business and we could say okay you actually just do need more leads that was the majority of his problem 
He was bringing on, what do you say, two members? He's bringing two members on average in per month. Per he was month. selling two members per month. And, and that number is not uncommon. When we work Correct. with gyms, they do two to four new members a month. He was doing two members a month. He sold, uh, I think he's, I mean, we're actually going to meet today and get the numbers. I, I would be surprised in the first probably 11 days or 12 days that since we've been running this, he's probably over 20. He had over 42 consults, I think, booked on his, uh, his schedule. Yeah, you I'll, know, I'll within, report back those numbers yeah. because we're going to get on, on our coaching call today and he's gonna, we're going to put it on the paper. We're but I see. mean, it's a difference of guys, like literally getting out of your own way and going from two new sales a month to potentially like 30. He'll be, he'll be like 60. Think about that. And th these aren't boot camp members. These are, are personal training and semi-private training members doing, you know, anywhere from his low end memberships, 57 a week. And he's like $97 a week for, and he's selling tons of those. Yeah. And he's doing it well. So, yeah. so that's, that's half the problem, right? Like a lot of clients or individuals aren't taking action because of the pain or, or the, maybe the fear, the resistance, something like that. What about those that the nails just isn't sharp enough? Like well, they're not in a pain point. We, we see this happen sometimes guys where, where they're pretty comfortable. You know, you're, you're in the gym, you're making decent money. You're not working too hard. Um, and, and you have the decision to make, do I, want to step into something where I'm actually gonna to have to do some more work. Um, the rewards are there, but do I need it or do I want it as bad? And that's a decision that is a personal decision. But what I would tell you going back to the very first example of the 40 K June of 21 to 40 K June of 22, you're, you're going backwards. If you're Correct. not making moves to grow, you are going backwards and it's just, it's not your fault. It's just happening around you. So I would argue is you have to, make moves and you have to be intentional about your growth or else you will slip into, you know, negative territory. And sometimes it's, and sometimes it is just kind of human nature. Um, we, we are very much like, I love going back to this. Like, like we're designed to stay alive period. That's, that's survive. survive is really just it. We're reproduce, survive. And, and like as basic and minimal as, is life gets, it's as simple as it is. Now, with that being said, comfort is, can be, what we cater to, where we find ourselves heading into. So um, my coach calls it the the uh, seduction of success, right? You've got that big win, or maybe it's just, maybe it's temporary. Maybe it's not the full month, or maybe it's not the whole year. Maybe you're not taking time off. You're just, you had that one big sale this week and you're like, ah, I got my weekend. Mm. Let me coast, you know, let me just, let me just see Friday afternoon and just get through Friday and we're good. Cause I got my numbers this week. Well, what happens when you have four more days? You did that on Monday or Tuesday. Like you have the opportunity now to blow the doors off your numbers and yet you hit cruise control. Cruise control, yeah. Which means, you know, next week when you don't sell shit, you're actually, you know, behind the eight ball when you had the opportunity of being that much further ahead. And so the seduction of success can be equally as dangerous, if you may, than the resistance or the fear of, of failure or, or, you know, the not taking action because you're unclear on it. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I went to this chiropractor for years. I've known this guy for years. He's mo since moved, but uh, you know, I would go to his practice and it was buzzing. It was always buzzing. There was always people floating around. He was making a, doing adjustments. He had massage people going on. He had a front desk kind of was just, it was always pretty busy. Uh, but you know, I knew him on a personal level. So we talk business all the time. So he crack in my back, we're talking biz, you know, and he had an opportunity for some bigger growth right? He had, he had a couple rooms that weren't filled. He could have hired a, an extra Cairo to work under him. And he just, he just looked at me. He's like, I don't want to work that hard. And I looked at him. I was like, I, that doesn't compute with yeah. me. How can you possibly do this? And you're the one doing the, all the work by the way, right now. And you could remove yourself from the situation if you just did a few things and he just was too comfortable. And I think that's, you hit it with the, that last line there too, though. You could do it with a couple of things in place. Like he could remove himself from yep. a lot of that work. And I think that gym, a lot of the gym owners we're working with or, or that are in that position of, well, the next step would take this much more work. Well, sure. But you're going to hit, if, if you're building your business to scale, like we talked about in a recent episode, if you've got the, the people, the staff, I mean, the staff, the, the systems, everything in place to grow and uh, truly scale that business, then that temporary work is going to, it's going to happen on your, your shoulders for a little bit or the implementation starts there. Mm -hmm. But then it, again, it should fall on the systems and the staff that you have in place. You shouldn't have to scale your business on your shoulders. Right. Shouldn't. 
And if you're in that position, maybe you're the new guy, you're the solopreneur, maybe you're handling all of that in the beginning. Well, that should still be a short term, like we have the path out of that. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the work that's involved is a little bit goes on your plate, but then ultimately we want the staff and the business to have the burden. That's where you've got true scale. That's where you can get to your next point. The ne the business can get to the next point. You equally benefit as a portion of, you know, the business's growth, Yeah. but it doesn't have to happen by another 20 hours a week. Well, the, the greatest examples are CLA workshop. There's two, there's two days yeah, there of go. suck, right? <laughs> sure. It's, yep, it's two grinders, you know, two days, Thursday, Friday, we grind it out. We knock it out. And you know what, from that point on forever, you, you are now way ahead. And so, yeah, th that is a great short-term example is like, look, yeah, there's a little bit of work for two days. You get through that. You have a system working for you for the rest of the time. 24 seven, 24 seven. And that's the hesitation sometimes like, oh, I don't want to do that work. Like, what are you doing this for? Like, what are you here so, for? So rather than spend two days of implementing this, you'd rather spend, I don't know, 10 hours a week, 12 hours a week. For 10 years. Forever doing the work that that system's going to do yeah. for you. It's, it's, it's interesting, right? And so really the point of this episode is, is like, really, what is it that's holding you back? What is it? Is it the fear? Is it the fear of failure? Is it the fear of, uh, you know, you don't believe in your own business? Is it money? Is it you're too comfortable? Like, what are those things? But at the end of the day, if you don't take action, you're going to be behind. And so you have to, it's imperative that you make some moves forward or else you're going to find yourself 12 months from now backwards. And yeah. It, it sucks. And you you guys are listening to the podcast for a reason. You, you want growth in your business, whether or not you know why, maybe that's where you got to dig a little bit or, or how, again, here's some ideas and, and the things that maybe could be holding you back and some ways to go about it. But everything Tim's listed, everything we've talked about today, the reasons for not moving forward that we've never come across something that we couldn't figure out. Never. Not one yeah. single we'll time. Wood, I though. mean, cause it just, it, it is that way, right? There's problems and there's solutions. We just got to figure out what the solutions are and just take action on one of them. Even if it's not the right one, we got to take action, some realm towards what we believe to be the best use of our time and energy and resources. But there's no excuse for sitting around and not doing something because everything's passing you up. Everything's happening around you. And so if you're not moving at the rate of the economy, if you're not equally matching the growth that's happening, you know, leaving your pocket every month with inflation, you're moving backwards. It's, I mean, it's kind of a harsh reality, but this is the reason that you're here, guys. Use what you have, what you know, find your reason for lack of growth and attack it. If, you're, if you need the information, find the information. If you need the money, find the damn money. Like there's no excuse to sit around with your thumb up your butt and say, hey, cool. Things are good. Status quo. It's just not. If you look on the back of our iron circle coins, it says, Un uh, it's a whole lot. It says, uh, unsatisfied with the status quo. Yep. Yeah. That, and that's truth. That's yeah. truth. So guys, that's it for this show. Hopefully this helps you take some action, make some moves forward. We don't want to see you 12 months from now, even equal to what you are now, because you're going to be behind. You're just going to be behind. And, and it's not only that, everybody around you is growing. You're just getting further behind. The, the delta is getting bigger. There so go. go take action, guys. That's it for this episode. Until next show, keep changing lives. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. All right. And thank you for listening to that episode of the Built to Grow podcast, where we help gym owners win. Now, do you want to connect with me and other gym owners online? All you need to do is join our private Facebook group, Business Talk with Fitness Professionals. Just head on over to Facebook and type in Business Talk with Fitness Professionals. And when you do, we're going to give you our 10 marketing strategies seven-figure gym owners use to win. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until then, keep building something great.